Got a body weight workout for you today. This is some of my favorite stuff right here, but I really want you to focus on this warm up here. Um, this animal flow stuff is hard, so let's make sure we set our body up for success. First thing, we got hand pad circles, so we're gonna set those knees up right underneath the hips and hands right underneath the shoulders in this quadruped position. Then from here, you're just going to circle on the pads of your hands. You can also get the heel of your hands, your thumbs. You could move your hands up a little bit further here uh, to take some pressure off of the wrists, but um, I do want you to get some load through the wrists and the fingers and really get the pads of your hands activated. Staying in that quadruped position here, maybe taking a nice deep breath and then exhaling out so you feel your core come into engagement. Now from there, with straight arms, you're going to drive the motion through the shoulder blades here. So pinch those shoulder blades together, send them apart. I want you to really acknowledge what your spine is doing here at the low back level and at the cervical spine level. So your neck, we don't want to be moving all over the place, really trying to drive that motion with the shoulder blades, keeping that core engaged. Now on to those elbow rotations. So really pressing into the ground here. And then as we stay engaged through the ground, rotating through those elbows. Focus on pressing through all your fingers here. And avoiding any sort of movement elsewhere in the body. Just looking for that elbow rotation here feeling those elbow pits come through and come forward. Now we're going into, this would be the six point beast position, so the quadruped position. Once again, we got those knees underneath the hips, hands underneath the shoulders. And from there, we wanna create some activation. So really pressing into the ground. Right here, I like to slide my hands out. Of course, they're not moving. They're just staying solid. And then creating some tension throughout the body as we go into some head nods here. So the point of this is to allow for head movement as we stay engaged through the body. You see me going turns here. I'm just acting like I'm looking over the shoulder. Now I should be feeling the engagement of the core and now we're gonna go into the beast march. So knees are still staying on the ground, but you're alternating by raising up opposite arm and opposite knee. Think about driving the motion with the arm here at the shoulder blade level. So just like those scapular push-ups, we're retracting that shoulder blade and just marching in place here getting those left and right sides of the body harmonized. On to the workout here. Before we get going there, just doing another wrist mobilization, hand warm up here as well. So really pressing those palms together, broad collarbone and broad through the shoulder blades. So really thinking about creating some space there, pressing those hands together and then just coming up onto those pads again. So feeling those fingers. Right. Creating some pressure there, creating some tension. And then we're gonna go into our beast march here. So you're gonna activate the beast now, which means you're gonna bring those knees just about an inch off the ground. And we're going to do our best 
to make sure that everything stays the same despite going opposite arm, opposite leg here. So using this as an opportunity to calibrate the body. Noticing some imbalances, able to gather some strength through the imbalances and press through those limbs that you do have on the ground. Stabilizing for just about a second and then coming back down to the ground, alternating over to the other side. Remembering to breathe through that movement. And we're gonna go two rounds through this whole sequence. So this next movement here, we've got the rock. So you're gonna activate that beast once again. Those knees are gonna come up off the ground. And then we're just gonna rock back here and then rock forward. So this could also be a, uh, an unload if you're familiar with animal flow, but we'll just keep it in the rocking pattern here. So really, I want you to think of this as your squat. We're just moving it 90 degrees. So we're facing the ground now. So using the hands to guide you, active through those shoulders, active through the back, and then pressing back through those hips. Now on to the bear squat. So we're gonna start in that beast position and then press up into a downward dog here. Now sinking back down into the loaded beast position and then driving the butt up to the sky. So really hips up, but simultaneously we're squeezing those quads and getting long through the backside, long through those heels. So, some nice stretch through the hamstrings, the glutes, maybe coming into the, the lower back. And then of course, getting a lot of opening through the shoulders and the upper back as well. On to the front step here. So gonna go back into that loaded beast position here and you're going to drive your right leg up and replace your right hand with your right foot. So you'll see this in just a sec. Right there, boom, eyes come up and I'm gonna pull that hand back like I'm rowing. So alternating right here, making sure we're exhaling. I like to exhale as that hand comes down, or that foot comes down rather, and then inhale as we travel back. Making sure we get those eyes up. Eye position super important for driving motion throughout the body and allowing this to happen naturally and also how it applies to your life. So, cool, round one is down. Taking a little breather here. Feel free to shake out your wrists, shake out your hands, whatever you need to do. All right, getting ready for that beast march here. So we're gonna activate that beast, knees an inch off the ground, and then alternating on that march. So owning the stability that you do have, pressing through the limbs that are on the ground, working hard to stabilize alternating sides. Breathe in and notice what we're doing with the head position here as well. So if that head starts to come down, make sure you get it back in alignment with the rest of your spine. And rest. Back into the rock here. So really making sure we're pressing back through the hips, creating a shelf with our butt here. Like we're doing our squat. And then those eyes can be up again to create some nice positioning through the spine. And if you are familiar with animal flow and you wanna do the unload here, really work on the unload position by all means. All right, into those bear squats now. So thighs should be burning a bit. We're finishing strong here. Really making sure that you're getting some length through here as well though. Otherwise, this one can just be downright miserable. So remembering to breathe here 
and getting high through those hips, long through the back of your legs. Breathe in. And cool. We will come into. We got, we got the front steps next. Oh boy. Yeah, so this one's a leg burner. All right, getting ready for those front steps coming up. And remember, getting that breath going. So exhaling. <laughs> exhaling as that foot comes up. Inhaling as we travel back. Once again, those eyes. Having those eyes drive the motion for you. Getting that spine in position. And we're ready here. We want to be practicing being ready for situations. And uh, yeah, eyes are super important in directing our movement. So I'm going to harp on that for this set. All right, a little bonus here. This is, You can just go ahead and do some more front steps here or just stretch out. Um, but this is called the front step through. So you will go ahead and replace your right hand with your right foot like we've been doing. And then you're going to kick through with that trail leg, the left leg. So step up, kick the other leg through. And so this would be the progression. And if you're familiar with animal flow, you probably love this move. And uh, if it's a struggle for you, well, we probably need to work on our mobility a bit. But that's why I want to show you these movements. Give them a try. See where your body is engaged, where we get hung up. And uh, start to figure some stuff out. All right. Now on to the cool down. We're going to go kneeling spinal wave here. So we're going to go into more of a downward puppy or downward dog position and then come through a full spinal wave there. As we send it back, really focusing on tucking the chin so we can get into full flexion through the spine. So flex, 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 open up, come into extension through the spine and reverse it. And I know you thought I couldn't get any wider. Well, guess what, the sun has certainly done that. <laughs> and for some rotation here, we're gonna go into some threading of the needle. So, just gonna thread that hand through. Doing our best to keep our hips square right here, but of course, relax into it, breathe, open up. Hitting that other side now. Expand the area between your shoulder blades. And then lastly, we'll just do some windshield wipers with the hips here, with the, with the legs. So lying on your back, and you could just breathe here if you want, but just lightly moving those hips from side to side. And I really encourage you to take this nice and slow, feel connected with this movement, and allow yourself to slowly relax into each position here. Well, that's a wrap. You got the warm up, you got the full workout and the cool down all in 15 minutes. Hope you enjoyed this. Always fun for me. See you soon.